Welcome to Empowered Learning. This is the first video in the video series for techniques of integration, where we will learn how to evaluate integrals by using partial fraction expansion. Specifically, what we are wanting to study here is how do we evaluate an integral whenever the integrand is a rational function. And so in terms of rational functions, um, we deal with them in three different flavors. And so the first flavor that we have here is, of course, um, whenever the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. We also have the case where it's switched, where the degree of the denominator is going to be um, larger than the degree of the numerator. And then, of course, we have the case where the degrees of the numerator and denominator are equal. Now, out of those three different types of rational functions that we normally deal with, um, in terms of partial fraction expansion, uh, we have six different cases that we pay attention to. And so what this video will do is go over those six cases in general so that you'll know um, in general what the integrand is going to look like. And then we're going to start going over some, some very simple examples. Um, in later videos that I will do, um, that will be an extra part of this series, we will get into more involved examples. And with those examples, I'm going to have those already worked out because some of those can get very, very long. And, and the important thing for those examples is not necessarily to get caught up in the minutia of each and every step but just to understand the flow of how everything goes. So now we're going to go ahead and get a very brief summary of what each of the six cases that we want to study um, will actually look like. So for case one, we see that our integrand, which we're just calling the function f of x here, uh, will be a situation where uh, we have a rational function polynomial divided by another polynomial where the degree of the numerator is going to be larger than the degree of the denominator. So um, something real simple like let's say we have x cubed divided by uh, x plus 1 uh, times x minus 3, something like that. And of course uh, we, we know that the degree of the denominator is 2, the degree of the numerator is 3, and so that meets this condition here. Um, we could also have a situation where, um, let's say if I had another one, let's say if I had another x here, then the degree of the denominator is going to be the same as the degree of the numerator, and that meets this equal to case. Now, case two says we're going to have a rational function in a, as our integrand, but the denominator um, can be factored out into products of non-repeating factors. So kind of give you an example of what that looks like. Again, um, if we had a situation where, and I'm just going to make something up here. Let's see, this is x minus 1, x plus 3, and then let's say we had x like this. Okay, so we know that x, x minus 1, and x plus 3 are all uh, factors that uh, do not repeat in the denominator. So here, this is kind of what case two is talking about, dealing with something that will look like this. Um, normally, you'll see, uh, instead of having an x squared there, uh, let me try to get this working here. So I'll erase this here. You'll have uh, something, let's say, like a 2x minus 9. Uh, you'll normally deal with something like that um, in a case 2 type situation. So for case 3, we have the situation where, again, we're dealing with a rational function. And this q of x is the denominator. But now our denominator has um, a, linear, a product of linear factors, but some of them repeat. Okay, So the kind of come back up here, um, instead of having just this x times x minus 1 times x plus uh, 3, maybe we have something like that. And so that is uh, normally what a case 3 situation would look like, something like what you're seeing right here. 
where we have that x plus 3 factor repeating. Case 4 deals with a situation where um, we have irreducible quadratic factors um, in our denominator. So let's say, for instance, um, I have something like 2x minus 9 again, but this time I have x cubed plus 1. Okay? And if we were to factor that out, we know that this would be x plus 1 here, and we would have uh, x squared um, plus x plus 1 here, like that. And this, of course, would be 2x minus 9. So I think, yeah, this should be a minus, not a plus. So let me change that. So that's x squared minus x, yeah. So that x cubed plus 1 will factor out into this. And we know that that quadratic factor that's in the denominator um, is one that's irreducible, meaning that um, we cannot use a regular factoring methods to be able to break it out. Um, we, if we were going to factor it, we would have to do it in terms of complex numbers, not real numbers. Okay. Now for case five, case five has a situation where, um, kind of like what, what we see here, um, we would have quadratic irreducible factors that repeat themselves. So we would have something like a 2x minus 9, um, x plus 1 here. And let's say this x squared minus x plus 1, but let's say now it's squared. Okay? That's what a case 5 looks like. And in case 6, which is our last case, um, we, have a, we have a function that looks like a fraction, but it has like all these weird um, nth root radicals that are in it. And so uh, the idea there is to essentially take your nth root radicals, uh, do some substitution to it uh, to get it looking like um, a polynomial in the numerator and a polynomial in the denominator. And then based upon what you get, it'll fall back to one of the five earlier cases that we've talked about. Okay. So uh, those are the types of um, integrands that we deal with. And so as I go through each case, um, I'm going to show you for the integrand that looks like that, how we actually deal with it. So our first example is a case one example where we essentially have a rational function where the degree of the numerator is larger than the degree of the denominator. And we know that because this r plus 4, that r has an understood 1 in its exponent. So whenever we have a situation like this, uh, we just do polynomial division. Okay? Reason being is that whenever we do the polynomial division, uh, we know that we could break this down to where we're going to have some expression plus another expression divided by r plus 4, where the expression that's divided by r plus 4 is going to be of lower degree. Um, the, the thinking is kind of like this. So let's say if we want to figure out what 5 divided by 3 is. If we kind of go old school here and say, well, 3 goes into 5 one time. 1 times 3 is 3. We subtract and we get 2. Then what we're saying here is that 5 divided by 3 is the same as 1 plus 2 divided by 3. And we see here how 2 is smaller than 3. So we're essentially doing the same thing, but we're doing it with polynomials instead of just numbers. So um, here we take our um, numerator, r squared, and divide it by r plus 4. And of course, we start off here just by saying r times what gives me r squared. And of course, that'll just be r times r. And then we multiply this r times both terms, and we get the r squared plus 4r. And then just like how we did subtraction here, we have to do subtraction here. And so we end up getting r squared minus itself, which is 0. And then we'll have a minus 4r here, which we bring down. And then we repeat the process. Okay. So in repeating the process, now we're looking at negative 4r, and we're asking ourselves, 
r times what gives me a minus 4r. And of course, now it's going to be a negative 4. So now we concentrate on the minus 4 part here. And we say negative 4 times r is a negative 4r. Negative 4 times positive 4 is a negative 16. And then we have to subtract. And of course, uh, when we do that, that will give this first term here will be a plus and this will be a plus as well whenever we do that and what we have is 16 remaining so now what this tells us is that we could rewrite r squared divided by r plus 4 as r minus 4 or our quotient plus 16 divided by r plus 4 and once we have that then of course that makes it relatively easy now to evaluate the interval. So now we just restate what it is that we're trying to figure out. So evaluate this integral. We can rewrite it this way. And of course, um, we have three terms here, the r, the minus 4, and the 16 divided by r plus 4. So uh, of course, the r, if we take the antiderivative of that, um, that's real simple. That will end up giving us the r squared divided by 2. If we take the antiderivative of minus 4, it's just going to be a minus 4r. And of course, for the 16 divided by r plus 4, we ignore the 16 and just take the antiderivative of uh, 1 divided by r plus 4. And you know, we could use substitution, but uh, we see here that if we let um, u equal r plus 4, then du is just going to be uh, dr. So it doesn't really help us much to do that. Um, so we just treat the r plus 4 as if it's just an r. And we take the antiderivative of 1 over r plus 4. It's just going to be natural log of r plus 4. And then, um, of course, we add our integration constant at the end. And again, um, as I've mentioned here, yeah, we actually got the substitution, but it really doesn't matter because du is equal to dr. And so that is how we do a case one type of um, rational function integral. So let's uh, do some examples now uh, that showcase uh, cases uh, two uh, for now. Uh, yeah, cases two and three to where we can actually work these out uh, from scratch. All right, so in this example, this is going to be um, a case two type of example. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and write that here. So this is a case two type of example. And so uh, the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and figure out, well, what is x plus 4 divided by x squared plus 4x minus 12? So, of course, the numerator, there's not much we can do with that but we can factor the denominator. And if we look here, we know uh, factors of 12 will be 6 and 2 that also have a difference of 4. So we'll put the 6 here, 2 here. And since we want a plus, this will be plus here minus there. And here we'll just do dx. All right, so at this point here, the main thing that we want to concentrate on is uh, taking this x plus 4 divided by uh, the product of x minus 2 and x plus 6 and uh, breaking it down. So here we want to note, let's get this right in here, we want to note that x plus 4 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 6 it can be rewritten this way, where a and b are just going to be um, actual real numbers. And we're assuming that we can rewrite uh, this one big quotient as the sum of two smaller quotients. And so if you have trouble sort of thinking about um, why that is so, uh, just kind of take this simple example here. Um, let's say if I wanted to add uh, one-third and one-half together. Um, of course, if we did that, 
Um, of course, the common denominator between both of these would be 6, uh, least common denominator. So 1 third would be the same as 2 6, and 1 half would be the same as 3 6, and what we would have is 5 6. And so the idea of partial fraction expansion is, is that if I tell you that I have a fraction that's 5 6, then believe me when I say that I could break it down into a sum of two fractions, um, mainly one third and one half being added together. So in the rational function world, um, what we're trying to do here with partial fraction expansion is essentially the equivalent of taking five, six and trying to uh, rewrite it as just one third plus one half, okay? So with that being said here, um, once we're at this point, we have two different ways of being able to evaluate um, or being able to solve for A and B. Um, there is a long way and there is a short way. So for this example, I'm actually going to do both ways so that you know the difference in between them. Um, but moving forward, whenever I have a situation like this, um, I am going to do the short way. Okay, But I'm going to purposely do the long way first so that you you kind of understand the the math behind how we get these answers but then you'll see that if we kind of sort of condense all that down that the short way gives us the same thing uh but with a lot less pain so let's kind of go off to the side here and do this the long way first so i've rewritten um our integrand here in the form that we want it in and so the idea here to solve for a and b the long way is to essentially uh, take this, uh, take both of these terms here and make it into one quotient, just like how I have this. So to do that, I know that the, the least common denominator between x minus 2 and x plus 6 is just going to be x minus 2 times x plus 6. So for this first term here, I know that I am going to have to multiply numerator and denominator by x plus 6 uh, to get what I want. And of course, in the second term, I know that I'm going to have to multiply the numerator and denominator by x minus 2. Okay, And then, of course, if I have that, then what we notice here is that the numerator um, and the denominator should equal each other, okay? Meaning that uh, we see that we have x minus 2, x plus 6 uh, for all three of our denominators here. So uh, whatever is on this side denominator-wise has to equal what is ever on this side denominator-wise. And that also means that whatever is in the numerator on the left side has to equal to what's in the numerator on the right. Okay, so uh, saying all this to say that, let's get rid of this, we could write all this as just one fraction on the left side here, where we add those two terms in the numerator together. So we had this plus, and then we have the x minus 2 times x plus 6, then what this tells us is that since the denominators are the same, then that means that our numerators must be the same. And so now that we have this, um, all we need to do is rearrange um, our left side of the equation so that all things that are in terms of x go together, all things that uh, are constants go together. So if we distribute here, we'll have ax times 6a, and distribute here, we'll have bx minus 2b, and this will be equal to x plus 4. And so now, Rearranging everything in terms of x, we'll have a plus b, all that with x, and then here we'll have 6a 
minus 2b. And this will equal to x plus 4. And so now at this point, we notice that our a plus b here has to be the same thing as this understood 1 right here. And we also see that this constant 6a minus 2b is going to have to be equal to the same thing as 4. So from here, in terms of the x, we know that a plus b has to be 1. And as far as our constants are concerned, we know that 6a minus 2b is going to be equal to 4. And so from that, uh, we have two equations, two unknowns. Uh, we can just use systems of linear equations to solve for both A and B. And uh, for this one, um, I'm just going to go ahead and line them up and do the um, addition method here, or the elimination method. So here, um, I'm going to go ahead and eliminate B. So that means I'm going to multiply 2 times um, all three terms in my first equation here. So if I do that, then this first equation will end up being 2a plus 2b equals 2. And then we just add those together. The b terms cancel, and we get 8a is equal to 6. And of course, that means a is just going to be 6 over 8, which would be the same thing as 3 over 4. And so now that we know that a is b over 4, we also know that b is just going to be 1 minus a. Uh, because if we rearrange this to solve for uh, b, it's just going to be 1 minus a. And so b is just going to be 4 over 4, so that's the same as 1, minus 3 over 4, which gives us 1 over 4. Okay. So all that to say that finally what we have here is a is equal to 3 over 4, and b is equal to 1 over 4. Okay. And so what that does for us now is it allows us to rewrite what we have here as just a, which is 3 over 4, divided by x minus 2, plus b is 1 over 4, divided by x plus 6. Okay. And so uh, we'll go back to where we were and put that in and then uh, finish up the problem. Um, and I'll also show you how we can get that A and B the short way after we're done. So now that we have um, figured out what our A and B um, actually wind up being, uh, we can go ahead and finish this particular problem now. So now we can just say that the integral of x plus 4 divided by the product of x minus 2 times x plus 6 dx, all that is now just the integral of 3 over 4 divided by x minus 2 plus 1 over 4 divided by x plus 6, all that dx. And of course here we will ignore the constant in the first term and we would just be taking the antiderivative of 1 divided by x minus 2, which would just be natural log of absolute value of x minus 2, plus ignore the constant 1 fourth, and take the antiderivative of 1 divided by x plus 6, which that is natural log of absolute value of x plus 6, and then plus our integration constant. So this is our final answer. So now that we see how to get this answer here, um, I do want to show you the shortcut way of finding what A and B are. Uh, 
so that we don't have to go through the whole systems of linear equations thing all the time. Okay, so I'm going to uh, switch colors here. Let's use this color. So I want to come down a bit. So now let's say a shortcut to find A and B. So the shortcut is we take this quotient here and the idea is this. So I'll take A as an example. We're going to take this quotient here but we're going to take this quotient and multiply it times the denominator under the actual uh, variable that I'm trying to find or constant that I'm trying to find. So here I'm going to take this and multiply it times x minus 2. And then what I'm going to do is take that result and evaluate it when x is equal to 2. Okay. So what's happening here is that um, I'm essentially saying hey if I was to have this um, quotient here I want to figure out what A is by um, considering this quotient without the denominator for where this uh, number actually comes from but then I want to also evaluate what's left by the number that would make my denominator go to 0. Okay. So that's uh, essentially the idea. And if we were to kind of uh, do the whole systems of linear equation thing the, the long way and, and kind of write it out in general, you would see that whenever we find A and B, it would actually end up being this particular formula. Okay. So once we do this, of course, we know that these two factors were reduced to 1. And all that we're going to have left here is just x plus 4 divided by x plus 6. And we're going to evaluate that when x is equal to 2. And so if we plug that in, that's just going to be 2 plus 4 um, divided by 2 plus 6, which gives us 6 over 8, which is 3 over 4. And you see that uh, we can get that a whole lot faster than doing what I did earlier. Okay. Now, well, we can do the same thing for B as well. So for B, we do the same thing. We'll have our quotient here. And um, let's see, x minus 2 times x plus 6. And so now we want to multiply that original quotient by x plus 6 but evaluate it at x equals negative 6. And of course, we know that essentially just means that um, we want to do x plus 4 divided by uh, x minus 2 in this case, but evaluate it at x equals negative 6. So here this would be x plus 4 divided by x minus 2 evaluated at x equals negative 6 and then we just plug in the negative 6. And you see here we get a negative 2 divided by negative 8 which simplifies to a positive 1 4. And so you see that uh, this is a very quick compact way uh, to get these uh, constants a and b uh, without having to do uh, nearly as much work as um, the traditional way, which is just solving systems of uh, linear equations, basically. All right, so uh, this is uh, the first example here. I'm going to do one more example, and then we'll uh, start another video uh, so that we can get to some of these other cases here. So for this next example, um, it's very similar uh, case-wise as to what we just got through dealing with. So this is another case two type situation. Um, but now we have a definite interval. So that just means that we're actually going to get some numerical answer here. Um, 
And we're essentially just trying to find the area under the curve of this rational function from y equals 12 to y equals 15. So with that, um, we need to first figure out how is the denominator going to be factored out. And if we factor it out, um, we see that we should get y minus 9 right here and y plus 5. And so our goal here is to figure out how can we rewrite our integrand like this now. So we know that uh, we could break it down that way. So now we want to see how is that actually going to work. Well, if we do this the shortcut way, we know here that um, we can keep this quotient. But since we have a y minus 9 for a, we want to forget about the y minus 9 and just take what's left here. So we would have y divided by y plus 5. But we want to evaluate it at the value that makes this denominator go to zero. And of course, that would be nine. And so when we just plug in what we have, that will be nine over 14. And so that is what our A will be. Similarly, if we do B, let's say Y divided by and now since we're doing b, we want to forget about the y plus 5. So this will be y minus 9 here. But we want to evaluate it at the value that makes um, this denominator for b go to 0, which will be a negative 5. So now if we do that, we have a minus 5 divided by minus 5 minus 9. And that will be um, essentially a positive 5 divided by 14. So now that we know what A and B are, we can go ahead and substitute this back in. So therefore, we're going to have the integral from 12 to 15 of, and for A, it's going to be 9 over 14 divided by Y minus 9 plus B is 5 over 14 divided by y plus 5. Call that dy. And so now we just need to take the antiderivative of both terms. So we ignore the 9 over 14 for the first term. Take the antiderivative of the understood 1 divided by y minus 9. And that's just going to be natural log of absolute value of y minus 9. Plus, same thing here. 5 over 14, take the antiderivative of 1 over y plus 5, which is natural log of absolute value of y plus 5 here. And of course, uh, since we are doing a uh, evaluating a definite integral, we're actually going to evaluate this from 12 to 15. Okay. Now, another thing uh, that's real subtle here is that since we have our values of y going from 12 to 15, um, if we look here, if we plug in uh, 12 for y and 15 for y, for both of these expressions that are inside of our natural log function, we see that we are going to get um, positive results always. So. Uh, my point in saying that is that although um, I do have to respect the fact that I need these absolute value signs because of the numbers that I'm dealing with here and the outcomes I'll get, I know they're going to be positive. So I can uh, kind of drop the absolute value signs here. So I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that instead of wasting um, space and writing a whole nother step for that. this. And so now um, all we need to do is just evaluate our antiderivative at 15 and then subtract, do the same thing at 12. So 
we got 9 over 14, natural log of uh, 15 minus 9, plus 5 over 14, natural log of 15 plus 5. And then we subtract, do the same thing, plugging in 12. Right. So now at this point, um, it's just a matter of uh, doing arithmetic. So we will have uh, all this over 14, and this will be 9 times natural log of 6 plus 5 natural log of 20. And then here we have minus, this also be over 14, so this will be 9 natural log of 3. Make that look a little better here. So 9 times natural log of 3 plus 5 times natural log of 17. So we can put this all over 14 if we like. I'm trying to see if I can combine anything but um, nothing looks great <laughs> so um, what we'll do is this so we'll take this 9 times natural log of 6 um, minus 9 times natural log of 3 here and we'll say this is 9 times natural log of 6 minus natural log of 3 we'll take that have those two terms and uh, remember here that this minus means that both of these terms here are negative. So next we'll have uh, plus 5, and then we'll have natural log of 20 minus natural log of 17 here. So... Uh, we'll see here that natural log of 6 minus natural log of 3 is just going to be natural log of 6 divided by 3, which is just natural log of 2. And this term here will just be natural log of 20 divided by 17. So... We'll go ahead and put it into this now. So this will be 9 times natural log of 2 plus 5 times natural log of 20 over 17. All that divided by 14. Okay. And um, if you want to get real technical, you could, you know, take the 9 and put it in the, you know, exponent for the 2 here. Take the 5, put it in the exponent for that fraction. But um, where we are right now should be um, enough okay and again there's uh, several ways we could express um, this final answer here uh, we could get it all into one logarithm if we wanted to but um, this is is good enough for what we need to do all right so uh, this concludes this first video in this video series on doing partial fraction expansion um, and evaluating integrals so i'm going to start uh, part two video where we're going to do more of these examples where we're going to work out. And so the next few examples that we're going to see will be uh, uh, case three or a combination of a case one and two type of example.